support Wrestle Talk. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk Stacked News. I'm Pete Quinnell. Ollie, Luke, and Laurie are still in hibernation due to their WrestleMania weekend streaming schedule, so you've got me again, but please still be gentle, thanks. Speaking of their streaming schedule, make sure to subscribe to our sister channel, Screen Stalker, as you can join the guys as they stream WWE 2K19 each night for WrestleMania weekend. Or in the case of last night's stream, you can watch me be undefeated. Ted, until I, until I face Laurie. Today is yet another stacked show, because what the hell is happening with the wrestling world? Triple H shooting on AEW in his Hall of Fame speech, Enzo and Cass invading the G1 Supercard, and Bret Hart being jumped during his Hall of Fame speech. No, seriously, what the hell is actually going on? Click the timestamps in the video description below to jump to any of those stories right now. Have yourselves a merry little super click party by pressing the thumbs up, subscribe as we are inches away from the big 700,000 subscribers, and Enable notifications to get notified each time a video or stream goes live and leave us a comment answering the question of the day, which today is, would you like to see Enzo and Cass in Ring of Honor? But before we get into the serious nitty gritty stuff today, let's take a look at something slightly more humorous. And nothing says funny quite like the intimidating Scottish psychopath. Drew McIntyre. The Future Shock DDT used to be Drew McIntyre's finishing move during his previous run with WWE. But ever since returning to the company in 2017, the Scotsman has been using a new and, let's be real, much better finisher to end his matches. The Claymore kick is now synonymous with McIntyre, with it being delivered from all over every possible arena. The dominant maneuver has put away countless wrestlers, but its origins may surprise you. During a recent interview with WTOP FM, he revealed the exact moment the Claymore was born. Back in 3MB, I was in a tag team match. I was running to give Ryback a big boot. Unfortunately, in 3MB, I was wearing extremely tight leather pants that didn't necessarily fit me. So as I ran to give him the big boot, the pants were so tight as I raised my foot to his head, I had to kick up the other leg or I would have torn my crotch and I kept rotating around and landed on the back of my head and knocked my out. Totally, totally normal creation process right there. And that is how the Claymore was born, with Drew McIntyre knocking himself out. Last night saw the combined efforts of Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling play host to the G1 Supercard, emanating from Madison Square Garden. There was an abundance of, well, everything really, with a lot of filler, a lot of angles, a lot of matches, a lot of commentators, and a lot of very good wrestling. If you don't want to know the results of the show, they'll be coming in the next few seconds, so skip ahead using the timestamps in the description if you don't want to hear them in three, two, one. The Honor Rumble was fun with a lot of entrances and not much wrestling, but we got to see Jushin Thunder Liger team alongside the great Muta for a great moment and some fun little comedy spots as well. The main show kicked off with an absolute corker of Jeff Cobb defeating Will Ospreay to become the new never openweight champion. Next was Rush against Dalton Castle, with Castle making a flamboyant entrance before losing to Rush in 15 seconds. Castle then turned heel against his boys after the match, the traitor. Kelly Klein defeated Mayu Iwatani next to become the new Women of Honor champion in a solid match before we had the longest segment ever. That well-known rapper Mega Ran came out next for a musical performance in a move that absolutely killed the crowd. Bully Ray came out and chased him off before Flip Gordon made a surprise appearance to fight Bully. That quickly then became a three-on-one beatdown before Bully's original opponent, Juice Robinson, and came out with Mark Haskins, and they just made the match a three-on-three -three one. That match then went on for 15 minutes, which felt like 40. The crowd died a little bit more, then Juice and Co won. Up next, Dragon Lee became the new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion after defeating Bandido and Taiji Ishimori in an absolutely cracking match that lasted about nine minutes, but had about 30 minutes worth of spots crammed into it. Next was a four-way tag championship match that was filled with controversy, but we'll talk about that a little bit later.
In the match itself, the Gorillas of Destiny defeated the Briscoes, Villain Enterprises, and LIJ to win both NJPW and ROH tag titles. Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi to retain his British Heavyweight Championship with another masterful submission, because of course. Up next, Kota Ibushi knocked off Tetsuya Naito to become the new IWGP Intercontinental Champion in a really great match. Matt Taven overcame Jay Lethal and Marty Skull in a triple threat ladder match that lasted about 30 minutes to become the new Ring of Honor World Champion. And finally, Kazuchika Okada won back his IWGP Heavyweight Championship by defeating Jay White in the night's main event to a great reception. The show had its ups and downs, but overall it was an enjoyable, albeit very, very long card. But now let's talk about that thing that happened during the show. One of the many things that has got wrestling fans going loopy as of late was an appearance by former WWE tag team Enzo and Cass. But this wasn't some lovely surprise appearance. This was confusing. Immediately after the conclusion of the tag team Fatal 4-Way, before G.O.D. even had a chance to celebrate properly, two figures could be seen brawling outside the ring. In the brief flash of hair that we could see, it was apparent Enzo Amore was here in Madison Square Garden, brawling with a Briscoe. Confusion and panic ensued, with the tag teams and fans uncertain of what was happening. Bully Ray could be seen coming out and tossing Amore aside before a wild big cast appeared to start wailing away on Bully. Replay of the match and shots of the commentary team were played, with the announcers seemingly filling for time while the pair were escorted out, all the while not mentioning exactly what was happening. From an initial view, this seemed like a legitimate shoot, and it wouldn't exactly be the first time Enzo Amore has done something stupid like attempting to hijack a show for a bit of attention. However, as more time passed, more and more details started to emerge. For one, security was not escorting Enzo and Cass out of the building, which started to get people thinking this might be a planned invasion. Tweets started emerging of those reportedly in the know, confirming it was in fact a work. The nail in the coffin, however, came when a tweet outlining the exact details of the invasion, including tagging Enzo, Ring of Honor, and Madison Square Garden, as well as hashtagging all the appropriate terms, was retweeted by Ring of Honor themselves. If you're going to go through all the effort of making this seem like a legitimate shoot, and doing fairly well with it too, maybe don't retweet something that your announce team is actively trying to avoid mentioning. You sort of undid your whole plan right there. With that, it was confirmed that the entire angle was a work, with Enzo and Cass seemingly heading to Ring of Honor. So, leave us a comment with an answer to that question of the day I asked before. Do you want to see Enzo and Cass in Ring of Honor? This attack at G1 Supercard may have been planned, but elsewhere, there was one that most certainly wasn't. WWE's Hall of Fame ceremony is normally a place for wrestlers to relax, break character, get dressed up all nice, and enjoy their fellow colleagues' accomplishments. However, some people just can't let others have nice things. So one fan, and I use that term in the loosest possible way, decided to jump the barricade last night during the Hart Foundation's induction into the Hall of Fame. The absolute moron made a beeline for Brett and tackled him to the floor before being immediately smothered and absolutely manhandled by what seemed like an entire locker room of wrestlers. The broadcast of the Hall of Fame cut to black while the situation resolved itself. However, several videos recorded on the phones of those in attendance painted the whole picture. After this particular I'll get tackled hard to the floor, Ronda Rousey's husband and UFC fighter Travis Brown was the first on the scene to teach this undisputable reprobate a lesson or two. He was quickly swarmed by other wrestlers such as Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, Big E, Dash Wilder, Drew McIntyre, and Heath Slater. It seems to be a wild pack, with half of them seemingly want to escort the man away, while the other half just wanted to kick the ever-living piss out of him for daring to disrespect Bret Hart during his Hall of Fame acceptance speech, no less. As he was being led away, Dash Wilder got in a lovely right hand directly to the head of the man, which dropped him to the floor in quick fashion. Have I ever mentioned how much I love Dash Wilder? After the commotion, Drake Maverick addressed the crowd, asking them to ignore what had just happened as Brett and his niece Natalia continued the Hart Foundation's acceptance speech. Luckily, no one was severely injured, apart from that 
hopefully. If it wasn't abundantly clear already, I just want to emphasize that this sort of behavior is completely reprehensible and has absolutely no place in professional wrestling. Don't be like him. The controversy at the Hall of Fame ceremony was not over though, as later on in the night, D-Generation X were inducted as the headline act, including current All Elite Wrestling producer, Billy Gunn. During part of their speech, a joke was made in that Vince McMahon would fire the entirety of DX if they kept mentioning his name, which prompted Gunn to remark that Vince couldn't fire him, of course in reference to the fact that he's now employed with AEW. Triple H, however, saw things a little differently, commenting that Vince will buy that piss ant company just to fire you again. Oof. Spicy. That wasn't the only remark the game had for AEW though, as he also commented that putting executive vice president in front of someone's name makes them more full of themselves, which is a nice little dig at AEW's current executive vice presidents, who are Cody and Brandy Rhodes, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. While this is almost certainly just these guys having a laugh during their Hall of Fame acceptance speech, it's interesting to know that the higher ups in the company are well aware of AEW and how they function. Shawn Michaels also thanked Gunn later on for being present and for being all in. Shawn Michaels to AEW confirmed. Check out the video to the right to watch Ollie, Luke and Laurie's predictions for WrestleMania 35 and click the other video to be taken to even more content. Subscribe to Screen Stalker to get notified when the gang livestream WWE 2K19 tonight before WrestleMania and tune back in here for live reactions to the show. Thanks to our patrons on Patreon, who you can see strolling below me right now. Click the thumbs up, subscribe, enable notifications, and leave us a comment answering the question of the day. I've been Pete Quinnell, and that was wrestling.